Here's a thing, right? At the end of every Scottish football season, once all the issues are settled, the winners have celebrated and the losers have had a right good greet into their beer. And once we've been our holidays and spent all our money getting drunk in the local lighter fluid and got bodies sunburned in the shape of a vest and woke up in strange beds with strange tattoos on strange parts of our anatomy, we come back skint, embarrassed, confused, wrecked, chucked, humiliated, and totally depressed that it'll be a whole year before we can enjoy ourselves so much again. So, what do we do to alleviate that depression? We turn to the one constant in our lives, the one thing we can always rely on to be there for us in our hour of need, football. And eternal optimists that we are, we hope, we dream, we fantasize that this season it will be different, that this season the only thing that will be predictable will be the unpredictability. Nay chance. <laughs> yes, this is me, Chick Young, the voice of reason, the scourge of false exclusives, the Elmer Fudd of Scottish football, at the start of what promises to be a glorious bright new dawn for all that is great and good about Scottish football. And by that, of course, I mean Glasgow Rangers, the Jazz, the Teddy Bears, the Sons of William, and their epic quest to take back what is rightly theirs in a Protestant country. The title, the Scottish Cup, and might as well throw in the wee Diddy Cup as well. Yes, after last season's fluky Celtic domestic double, I mean, how jammy can you get? Has the mighty Eck McLeish put together a squad good enough to restore Rangers to glory? Please, God, say I. Yes, it'll be difficult. Uh, Celtic are still the team to beat. We knew that, and that's why we brought in so many new players in the summer. Boomsong, Andrews, Alec Ray, Big Dado, Wee Nacho, and uh, that other bloke whose name I can't pronounce yet. Of all the transfer deals we've done over the summer, I have to say the signing of Novo was the most pleasing. There was talk of him going to Celtic and teaming up with Silla, but I knew that Novo and Momo was a no-go, so in the end we were able to, to snatch all we nacho. And let's face it, you know, it's, a, it's about time I got one over in, in Martin O'Neill. Well, no, seriously, it, it was a, a major disappointment. Make, make no mistake, a major disappointment not being able to persuade Nacho Novo to, to join us at Celtic because... Henrik Larsson's decision to leave us came as, as such a shock. It, it really did. I mean, I mean we, we only had something like a, like a year to prepare for his departure. And in that time, Nacho Novo was all we could come up with. But, you know, as, as soon as Nacho walked into Celtic Park, I, I, I just had a feeling that the little Spaniard fancied a move to Ibrox. I, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was his, his body language. Maybe his, his, his blue top and jeans, or maybe it was him singing, Hola, hola, we are the Billy Boys. But no, no. Now isn't the time for being a, a moaning mini. Now is the time to stand up and be counted. And, and no using your fingers, Sean Maloney. Well, me's dead sad, because I went my summer holidays to Disneyland, and when I came back to Celtic Park to show everybody my Mickey Mouse bib, some of my pals has left in the summer. Henrik's away and Johan's away. And even Jimmy Smith went tatas to Holland. Or was it the Netherlands? Anyway, I think Jimmy's given up football to be in a Dutch version of EastEnders. But he's no playing Den Watts. He's playing Den Hag. And soon everybody will be away. Even my uncle Paul Lambert. And, and I need a pee pee. Well, yes, yeah, so we're my last season of, of, of playing in that. So uh, I've been and went, and I'll, you know, I'll be going back to, to the Germany 
to do the coaching courses and that. And we always did prestigious so it is, by the way. And after that, well, I don't know, you know. I mean, some of the boys have been saying, what's your point? And I learned all that coaching stuff. If nobody can understand what I love you're saying, but that's not true. Because, you know, when I was with, 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 with Borussia and, and, and all this stuff, with, 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 like, so really and, that, and you know, fabulous player, you know, and, 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 and I mean, you know, and, and I, I can't put it any clearer than that. No, yeah, we, mm, Alan McAnally here. And OK, put it this way. Good luck, Lambo. Good luck, mate, because I'm telling you, bud, the German coaching system is used in Germany. Best in the world. Best in the world, bar none. And believe me, I know this from my time with Bayern in Munich, with Bayern in Germany. OK, point taken. We all saw how pure Ming and Germany were in Euro 2004. But what you could not deny was that they were superbly well coached in their pure Mingingness. OK, yeah, ich bin ein Binliner. Maybe I'm a wee bit biased about my fellow countrymen. But overall, generally speaking, as far as their coaching goes, I can't think of one German coach from Germany who isn't absolutely brilliant. No, hold on, actually, I can.